Hey folks, time for another Q&A video. This one is going to be focused on the solar micronova. Question number one, what is the best evidence of the solar micronova? Well, first of all, in that playlist down below the video, we give all of the evidence. My favorite would be the Nova level isotopes. Yes, we know there's a magnetic excursion at every single one of these cycles. We know there's volcanoes at every one of these cycles. We know there's major climate shifts and disappearances of species but there are also nova level isotopes, isotopes that you can't get without a nova level event on a star. Not even an impactor creates enough heat to what they say in theory would be able to actually create some of these isotopes. So it is those isotopes that really tell us that this is what's happening on the sun because it would take too long for those isotopes to get here. Uh, and if they were from another star, not to mention that most of them have short enough half-lives that they would have decayed before they got here. Uh, beyond that, if there was a second place, we know that there are solar cycles, uh, you know, of 11 years, 5.9 months, 200 years, 88 years. But we also know that there's the millennial 3,000 and 6,000 year super flare cycles, and those were just recently discovered. All you have to do is scale that up one more time and you get to the 12,000 year mark, and every time you scale it up, you get a little bit bigger of a solar blast. And so at the 6,000 year mark, we know it's about an X1000 super flare. So at the 12,000 year mark, we are well within micronova range. Question we get a lot is when is the sun going to turn red? When is it going to darken? When is it going to turn black? Well, unfortunately, that's probably only going to be about one to three days before the actual micronova happens. And the reason for this, uh, in addition to those of you who take a more uh, religious, uh, religious or uh, mythology aspect to it, that's about what they talk about in, in those old stories. But also, when we have the actual galactic magnetic reversal at the sun, yes, it is in progress right now. The entire solar system is shifting. But when we actually hit that flip point in the middle where magnetism is zero, we are going to see two things. One, there's going to be a dimming of the sun. We've seen several articles about stellar dimming, and we actually just saw one this morning, if you caught the morning news. And in addition to its intrinsic luminosity decreasing, when we actually hit that galactic zero point and we have the galactic magnetic reversal, we're going to see the sun lose its ability to really blast away the dust and the other material in the inner solar system. And it's going to begin to accumulate in the upper atmosphere of the sun, the corona. And so both the intrinsic luminosity decrease and the blocking by the accumulated material is going to be what's causing the actual decrease in the sun's light, the changing of the colors, things like that. But it's not going to last very long at all. A couple days later, maybe one to three days later, that galactic magnetic energy is going to reinvigorate the sun and it's going to have that blast away power again and it is going to shake off that shell like a snake shedding its skin and that's what's going to be the solar micronova. Uh, stories of the sun turning black are in fact uh, a part of this. My favorite ones come from Egypt, uh, but those are not the only ones. Um, it should be a progression from red to darkish red to black and then solar micronova like that. Get a lot of questions about what are the components of the micronova? And there are several. We go over all of this in the playlist down below the video. Happy to do it again now. After there is the darkening, when the actual micronova occurs, there's going to be a major flash this is going to be in the light-based energy, and it will arrive here in eight minutes. This will be optical light. This will be ultraviolet, extreme ultraviolet, X-ray, probably some gamma rays as well. Over the next several hours, as the actual shell of the micronova is heading towards Earth, we are going to see an increase in cosmic rays and solar energetic particles. Um, these will basically be the most highest energy protons and electrons, and those are going to be mostly funneled to where the poles are at that time, the magnetic poles at that time. As we actually get the shell impact, that's when we're going to have all of the larger items. That would be the heavier isotopes, the helium, the dust that is carrying the isotopes, and any of the plasma that is actually congealed into impactors. Uh, that's when those will hit as well, probably 
you know, 14 to 18 hours after the actual micronova, which is also the reason why we have impactors at every single iteration of the cycle. Now, every time I mention this, someone's like, Ben, you should talk to Randall Carlson. First of all, uh, I don't think I've ever called him and he not picked up the phone. There is video of Randall and I in these playlists you can watch. And the key part of my interview with Randall is in the disaster movie, which is the first thing in the playlist. Um, this is why so many people blame the Younger Dryas on an impactor only, forgetting the fact that it can't produce Nova level isotopes or a geomagnetic excursion or produce volcanoes on the other side of the world or any of the other things that we actually know come with these cycles. But yes, there are impactors as well, and those come when the actual Nova shell hits. There's a question about when does the cold happen, this new ice age that's coming? And the answer is with the micronova. The micronova itself is actually the cooling event. And here's why. After the micronova, we are going to have dust and a ton of other accumulated material, not only in the upper atmosphere of the earth, blocking out sunlight like a volcanic or nuclear winter, but it's going to be between the sun and the earth as well. Barely going to get any sunlight for a little while, and that is what's going to pretty rapidly freeze the planet. Now, here's the good news. We can currently get the question, how long is that cold going to last? And the answer is, from all the geologic evidence and even some of the stories of mythology, not very long at all. In the wake of the micronova explosion, the reorganization of the magnetic fields and the stellar surface on the sun, it's going to be pretty tumultuous up there. It's going to be firing super flares almost every day. And that has a major heating effect. For any of you who saw our interview with Robert Schock eight years ago, again, the best part of that is also in the disaster movie, the first one in the playlist, the Ice Age may have really ended in just a matter of days, and there's no reason to believe that that's not what's going to happen again. The super flaring will be so extreme that it's going to very quickly blast away that material, and then at when it starts blasting that material away and that energy is able to more uh, effectively get into the earth, that covering in the atmosphere will act more like an insulator to trap in heat than anything else. And so, as I have said before, yes, this event is like the last minute of the Super Bowl and it's a tie game. Your heart hits your feet a hundred times in that last minute. But when it's over, things do return relatively quickly, and they return to a relatively stable, sit, uh, stable state both on the Earth and on the Sun. Uh, whether that is a matter of days or a matter of weeks, even up to a matter of months, can't really say. That one's hard to know. We don't have a crystal ball like that, but we do know it's not so long that the entire world dies. It's not so long that humans haven't managed to survive every single one of them. So... Yes, this is a very serious thing, but never forget, we are all the children of survivors. It is in our DNA. You are a survivor. I am a survivor. Everyone on this planet has it in them somewhere. Yeah, we're not all going to make it, as Billy once said, but there is the ability to do it. The world is going to come back relatively rapidly. Yes, you will need food stored, water stored, other supplies so you can make it through that recovery period, especially if that is in the weeks to months range. But this is not a reason to have despair. It's not a reason to have fear, which is nothing but a thief of time and focus and energy. Awareness of something scary doesn't have to result in fear. It should result in your awareness of it the continued investigation and keeping up to date with it so you stay informed and the preparation for it. Because as I've mentioned before, every single time this has happened, and you can find several of these cycles in some of the Indian texts, but specifically with 12,000 years ago, all of the major cultures that appeared to have survival success all had certain things in common. They all did certain things and the things they were doing all implied they knew it was coming. So that's where it starts. I'll see you in the morning for The Daily Show. Be safe, everyone.